hi guys welcome to my channel i'm yinky in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make an off shoulder dress and it's kind of um, bustier dress where the you're going to draft the bodies together along with the with some part of the sleeve as you can see in the picture so i have the one i made for myself in um, kind of yellow color and the other one by its side so you can make the bustier a princess bustier or an ordinary bustier so in this tutorial i'll be showing you how to do one so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so before the end of this tutorial as lots of awaiting tutorial i will see you from this channel so if you have subscribed already thank you and god bless you so the first measurement you will take is are all your vertical measurements so place your tape measure like so Starting from the shoulder, take the neckline, neckline measurement, neck depth is 5 inches in my own case. Then just rule your line, your straight line like so. All the all other um, straight line measurements like upper chest, bust, up, uh, under bust and so on are there. You can see a dotted line. The dotted line is the shoulder to shoulder measurement. That's the back measurement in some cases. So later on, you can take your nipple to nipple. The nipple to nipple measurement plus half inch sewing allowance is taken, which is 4 inches in my own case, as you can see. So I will take that 4 inches down to the hem line of the dress. To the hem line of the dress. So after that, you're going to indicate that with a straight line to the hem line of the dress. So this tutorial is a kind of tutorial whereby we are going to be cutting the dress together there won't be an half cut so after that take two inches that intake on the neckline then one inch one inch above the bust one inch below the bust so we want to create our bust here now two inch on the under bust so we spread i spread it as one inch on both sides of the leg one inch making the two inches all together on the half length also on the hip also i'm i'm spreading the two inches as one, one inch on both sides of the that leg and also on the hem line of the dress the camera is not capturing that but that's what i'm taking the same two inches that intake so i'm going to connect the that intake with my ruler right now so just watch as I connect it. So you're going to connect it like so. Then the rest of the dart through to the M line of the dress. So whichever length you want to make your dress. So this is kind of a three quarter dress length. So it's not a short dress. Is longer than a short dress so the dart intake here is two inches right that's what i'm trying to check so that means my shoulder to shoulder measurement that i use dotted line to increase i'm going to increase it by two inches so a new line will be drawn for my arm o and i have done that right now as you can see so i will label this as my upper chest don't forget and I'm going to come up from the upper shades by one inch. So I'll create my off shoulder neckline like so. The way I placed my pattern master, just place it like so. Then come down by three inches from the arm o leg line like so. I came down by three inches. Then here, place another three inches here also. There is, this is the extension of my sleeve. Place another three inches parallel to the three inches I just took again. So making it so I'm going to square it up. So just extend the neckline like so to the sleeve. So so I'm going to draw the just draft the sleeve extension like so you can see. So the line I just took now the width depends on you. The width is not the length is not more than two and a half inches. So that's my, that will be the extension of my sleeve length. 
so here this line here will be parallel to the one up so i'm going to just draft it out like you're seeing so i've completed the drafting of my sleeve as you can see and uh, the measurement here will be will be the bust measurement plus half inch sewing allowance so i have input the bust measurement to be able to complete my arm o curve so you, have, you can see the armor curve has been completed like so and the rest of the measurement will be input so you're going to forget to add all your dart intake where you are inputting the the under bust circumference the half length circumference the hip circumference and so on so make sure don't forget to input all your dart intake then add sewing allowance of half inch round the dress on the upper part and on the side like so so i had a half inch on the arm hole but later i cancelled it because this arm hole does not need any other measurement all i need is to just even bring the arm hole down a little bit so i'm going to come down on the upper chest just go up on the upper chest by one inch is okay so as to extend the arm hole so i need to extend the arm hole so i'll be cancelling the uh, uh sewing allowance that i had it so i'll be creating another a new arm hole so this new arm hole will make it comfortable for the wearer so i'll just extend it and cancel all the the ones i made before as you can see so having done that we are almost done with creating the this is the front pattern I forgot to tell you that that this is the front pattern as you can see i created the bust here on this so i'm going to use this to create the back pattern so uh well the next thing to do is to after i have done that to cut it out so just follow the way i cut it out so i needed to blend the bust area so that it will be smooth and to avoid sharp edges so after that, just go ahead and cut it out like so. And what I cut out now will be my front pattern, which I'm going to place together to, I will retrace it to, to draft the back pattern. So I will just retrace it to draft the back pattern. Though the bust area will not be used, so I'll place it on each other like so. To eliminate the bust you can see how i placed it on a new paper so i wanted to create my back pattern here so i left the zipper allowance so i'm going to use my tracing wheel to do that so i'll just trace out all the, the lines so you can see the tracing wheel on my hand so i'll use it to trace out all the lines like so so that Whatever I trace out is what I'll create later. So I have traced out everything. So after I have traced it out, and leaving the zipper allowance of one inch, I'm going to recreate another one. And this will serve as my back pattern. So you can see all the lines has been traced out. The upper shares, the bust, the up, uh, under bust, the half length. And on the dart line, I'm going to just make sure I place half half inch on both sides of the half length half half inch in this case not one one inch and on the upper chest just come down by one inch then connect it to the half length like you're making a, 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 a basic bodies so just connect it if you can make a basic bodies pattern this will not be difficult for you so we are only creating the that for the back then on the hip line I have got I came up on the hip line by one inch. You can see what I'm connecting it to on the hip line. I came up by one inch, then I'm connecting it to that from the half length. So then I will do that on the other side also. I only came up by one inch and I went down also by one inch. So on the M line of the dress, I'm going to place the darting tick on the half length on the m line of the dress also so that what happens on the half length will be created on the m line of the dress this is just to create the bot side the to make the back side to have a good shape that's what i'm trying to do 
So I'll connect the dart. You now I came down by one inch from the hip line. So I'll just connect it to the dart intake on the M line of the dress. So this will just be like you're creating a, the back side. You know, it looks like you, the back side is giving you a good shape. So I'll come to the back right now. This is where the zipper will be. I want to avoid the zipper bulge. So I'll just go inward on the half length by half inch. Then blend it up to the upper chest area and the bust area. Then come down also and blend it up to the hip area. So just watch the way I blend it. I will use my free hand to do that in the GV. So, so just do that in the GV right now i'll just use my free hand to do that blend it up to the hip line just to avoid a zipper budge so while i'm in while i while inputting my circumference measurement i'll consider all the dart intake even the ones that i used to intake the intake for the zipper budge i'll add it to all my sewing allowances while i'm inputting my circumference measurement so the hip measurement here is as an input then i added sewing allowance of two inches the way i added sewing allowance to the front so here also on the half length i will input the circumference measurement and i will consider on the half length i have that intake of one inch i will consider it so on the m line i have that intake of one inch also i will consider it so the hip measurement minus two inches will be placed on the m line the hip measurement here whatever i have here is 12 inches i will deduct two inches from it i'll place it on the m line so whatever you have there just deduct two inches from it and place it on the m line then i will also after i place the deduct two inches from it i will add the the that intake to it and that's why what that's why i'm having what i have right now and after i have done that i will just connect input all the other so you, uh, the all other allowances while you input your measurement so i'm going to trace out what i'm tracing out here is what i have used my tracing wheel to do there's no special thing here so i'll trace out the sleeve also i'm just following what the tracing wheel has done but for the neckline for the neckline this is what i'll be using to do the neckline i don't want the neckline of the front so i'll be inputting my own neckline like so but I will be following the front neckline also, you, following the tracing wheel. But this is the pattern it will take. The shape it will take is different from the shape the front will take. So just use this and connect it. So my back pattern is almost ready. I have input all the circumference measurements. Then and I have removed my dart. You can see the dart has been removed. So the next thing is to cut it out. Then whatever I have here is what I'm going, I'm going to use to cut out my main fabric. So I'll just go ahead. I have added sewing allowance of half inch on the neckline. So I'll just go ahead and use this to cut out my main fabric. I'm done with the main bodies. I'll just use this to cut out the main fabric right away so i have the front and back pattern here you can see it and the front is cut on fold you can see fold on it so i have ironed my interfacing i use my hard wording and um, i placed the paper stay on it so I only together let it be let that uh, interfacing be placed on the bust area. So this is for the front. So I'm going to stitch by half inch down to the bust line, and I will do that for the other panel also. So I have three panels for the front, the center, and the side. So the side will be placed on the center panel, and I will use half inch to sew it along like so. So I'm going to go ahead now and move to the front, the back pattern. This is the back pattern with the zipper allowance of one inch. Down, the back pattern is four. So the zipper allowance is what I'm touching. Then I'll place the side like so. And I'm also going to join 
this together with half in sewing allowance also i'll be joining this together with half in sewing allowance but i will not uh, before i do the joining i'll first of all start with the front pattern so i will start the front pattern i'll start from here i'll make sure the breast point matches with each other breast points on each panel matches with each other then i'll go ahead with sewing allowance of half inch so this is what i have then i'll bring the second panel to make it a complete uh, front pattern i'll join it the way i joined the first one so i'll be using sewing allowance of half inch right away so having done this i'm almost done with the front pattern so before I start my joining, make sure you I make sure I cut out the lining. So make sure you cut out the lining and do the same thing to the lining. Cut out the lining same way and iron uh, a gum stay. We have an interfacing called gum stay. Iron it on the bust area also on the lining to make it have a good shape. So this is my lining. I iron my gum stay on the lining to make it have a good shape also so the lining has been joined the same way i joined the main fabric and this is what i have for the front panel so this is the back i have joined the back panel also and i have fixed my zipper so join the back panel and i have fixed my zipper so i did the same way to the lining you know i told you the lining is called the same this is the slit at the back the slit at the back so the slit at the back is opened and on the lining also i opened the slit at the back i have not joined the slit at the back because the type of sewing i'll be doing is the one that i'm going to use the lining to turn almost everything so i open up the zipper allowance but from the zipper allowance through to the slit is not opened i join it together as you can see so just use your chalk to mark all those areas so that it will match each other on the lining but the lining is just shorter by half by one inch than the main fabric note the lining is only shorter on the m line one inch than the main fabric so that i'll be able to turn everything inward here i'm inputting my circumference measurement the off shoulder circumference measurement is what I input here. I'm using 40 inches as my circumference measurement, and that's what I'm inputting here on both sides. Then afterwards, I'm going to input all my circumference measurement towards the bust, the under bust, the, the half length, and so on. So after I have input all the measurements here, the bust, so you're going to off your shoulder. The, the off shoulder measurement by 5 inches as I have off it before I started taking all these measurements. So make sure you place it like so, then input all your circumference, the vertical measurement first before you start inputting your circumference measurement. So having done that, I will do that on the other side also, and I will also do that on the lining also. I'm going to place the lining also and do and input all my measurements on the lining. That means the front and back will be placed together. The front and back lining will be placed together. You input the measurements separate. Then for the main fabric also, the front and back will be placed together and you input the measurements separate. So that's how I'm going, I'm going to do this so that the lining will be in one place and the main fabric in one place so i have joined that i have joined the the main fabric together by the side i have input the all the circumference measurements and i have done that also to the lining so on the shoulder or on the neckline i'm going to use my pin office pin to hold it together i'm holding the lining together with the main fabric this is the process of turning so i want to turn the main fabric with lining now so i'll be holding it together with my pin and also on the zipper allowance i also hold it with my pin so the zipper allowance area also will be torn so i will hold it with my pin so 
after I have done the neckline, then I, I can start anywhere. So I'll be going on a short break now. I'll be back in a minute. Do you desire to be a professional fashion designer in just a few weeks? Then what are you waiting for? Enroll at Yinki Kutor Academy today. Our online, offline and physical trainings are open in the following classes. Advanced class for 4 weeks, intermediary class 8 weeks and beginner class for 20 weeks. For inquiries, please call 0805 794 or 0903 218 4192. You can equally connect to us on our various social media platforms at Yinki Couture. Yinki Couture, home of dressmaking techniques. You are welcome back. So here, after holding it with my pin, I will start my sewing on the zipper allowance as you can see, very close to the teeth of the zipper. So start your stitching right away, very close to the teeth of the zipper. So the reason why I'm stitching on the main fabric is to be able to guide me so that I will follow the lines of the thread. So just go ahead. When I get to the neckline, I'll just follow half inch sewing allowance, stitch along. So as I stitch along, I'll be removing the needle that I used to hold the lining together with the main fabric. Don't forget that the lining is underneath. And the essence of doing this is to be able to turn the whole garment with the lining. And uh, having, so this is, I am on the neckline. I'm still on the neckline. So go ahead and stitch. Just follow the line. And stitch. The reason why you must stitch on the main fabric is so that you will be guided. When you stitch on the main fabric, you will be guided, guided with the sewing lines and the shape that you used to cut your main fabric so i'll go ahead this is the second zipper allowance go ahead and stick very close to the teeth of the zipper we have almost gotten to the end here to where the zipper ends here so then after doing that i turn to the right side so you can see i've turned to the right side and this is what i have and this is the slit after I have turned to the right side, this is the slit and the end line. Those places have not been turned, but I have turned to the right side inside. I have turned the lining to the right side. So you're going to check the right side of the lining with the right side of the fabric. Place it on each other. Let them face each other. What I want to do now is the end line. I want to secure the end line, turn the end line. So let the right side of the lining be facing the right side of the fabric. So do it in a way it can be convenient for you because the slit is still open. So you can do that through your slit. There is an opening you can use to do that. I did it through my slit and uh, it's very convenient because the slit is still open. Mm -hmm. So just go ahead and do that through the slit like so. So after I have done the M line, this is the M line, I will turn to the right side. And after I turn to the right side, this is... After I turn to the right side, this is what I have. I have turned to the right side now, and this is what I have. So, having done this, just do it in a way it's convenient for you. I have the slit open, Dabi. The slit has not been done. So, since the slit has not been done, this is the next thing is to secure the slit. And through what opening will you secure the slit? You're going to secure the slit through the armhole opening. So I'm going to put in my hand to be able to pull out the slit through the arm O. So I'll do the slit. The two slits will be done separately. So I'll do that through the arm O. So this is the arm O. You can see I've dipped in one of my hand into through the arm O. So I want to bring out the slit here. So I'll just bring it out so that I'll be able to turn it, placing the right side of the lining on the right side of the fabric. So you can see the way I pull it out now so that the right side of the lining is facing the right side of the main fabric. So I'll secure the slit like so. 
remember we shorten the lining by one inch and you can see how i fold it you can see that the main fabric is turning i turn it by one inch on to the side of the uh, lining i hope you understand that in grammar so i just want you to understand that we are turning everything so so in such a way that the lining will not be showing on the right side of the main fabric so i will stitch with half inch here till i get to the end of the slit i'll stitch with half inch so after i have stitched with half inch the next thing i'm going to do is to bring it out so make sure you reverse your stitch at the end of this each slit very well the next thing to do is to turn it to the right side and and bring it out so you're going to see that one slit has been secured one of the slit has been secured then the next is to do the second slit so the second slit also will undergo the same process the first slit undergone so i'll turn it by one inch and secure it the same way so this is it i have done the two slits you can see how fine it is you're going to go ahead and press it iron it very well so this is what we have we have the arm hole the, on the only opening here is the arm hole where the sleeve will be input so we are going to input the sleeve this is the sleeve so i made the sleeve uh, like a three-quarter sleeve that will not get to the wrist so you can make it a long sleeve you can make it a short sleeve so i'm going to place the sleeve here so i have a video on how to draft the sleeve of this kind of off shoulder busted dress i have a video the link will be will be in the description box where you can learn how to draft this sleeve and how to um, turn it with lining so just attach the sleeve to the arm hole like so so this has been cut in the measurement using the measurement of the arm hole circumference so just attach it like so i'm going to use half in sewing allowance to place the sleeve so the sleeve has been done after you have done that you can use half in that half in sewing allowance to stitch, stitch it round and this is what i have i have placed the sleeve and you can see how neat the sleeve is and the last part is the placing of the flounce so the flounce is placed using um, uh, i use a 360 degree to cut the circular pattern so i'm going to place uh, a link on how to do that also so i'll go, just place the flounce you can see the way i'm just placing it it's not a big deal at all so the flounce is cut out the only the main fabric only the main fabric so I will, I'm, I'm going to open up the zipper in order to be able to place it on the right side starting from the almost the breast point towards the sleeve sleeve and mid mid part so I'll, it will just go down to the sleeve length to the wrist like so so I'm going to input place it place it on my machine like so and the right side of the flounce will be facing the right side of the main fabric so make sure you are careful while you are placing the flounce so that it will not affect the bustier area so use uh, you, you do you are going to secure the end of the flounce by using uh, an overlocking machine to do that you can use an overlocking machine and use a machine thread to do that so you can just go ahead and place your flounce like so just split it a little split it along but make sure as you spread your pleat the pleat is enough to be able to do it to the sleeve length so you must be able to pleat it till it get to the um, plain sleeve length so this is i have completed that and this is what i have 
this is the line you can see that the bomb bust bot area the bomb bomb area is wrinkled a little is the gum i used to place my uh, e e pad the bot pad so you can learn how to do that here also on my channel i'll place the link in the description box how to boost your bot area or your hip area and this is the front this is the front you can see how neat it is inside and outside this is the outcome of the dress you can see how beautiful it is so this video can guide you to make one and uh, don't forget to subscribe like share and also give us a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video until then take good care of yourself bye